Hey everyone, Peppu here! This video is a follow-up of my previous one where I talk about low rank. In this video then, I will talk about high rank, specifically from the start to the final boss. There will be spoilers regarding monsters you will encounter during this rank, so please, if you don't want to be spoiled, don't watch this video any further. This time, compared to Hinoa's quest, you don't necessarily have to go through the high rank by yourself, but you can join other hunters and help each other out. However, keep in mind that this video will guide you either if you want to finish high rank together with other people or in solo. As I already mentioned in the other video, the tips and suggestions I will give you are based on my personal experience. If you would like to point out something that I missed, please write it in the comments. Well then, without wasting any more time, let's jump straight into it. There are two ways to unlock HR quest. The first one is by completing the Special License Test 3 in the 6 stars quest from Hinoa. The second is by completing the 3 stars key quest in the low rank hub. Either way you will unlock the urgent quest, whose objective is laying an Apex Arduros in a rampage quest. Successfully completing the urgent quest will unlock the 4 stars quest in the hub. On top of that you will unlock new pedalises and among them the demon pedalis second. You will also be allowed to craft decorations, but unfortunately the ones available at the beginning will not be that useful. As I mentioned in the previous video, the step from village low rank to high rank is huge. That's why it is important to know exactly what to do from the very beginning of the high rank. We will immediately focus on getting a better weapon as well as to gain more defense with a high rank armor, keeping quick shift 3 and other offensive skills. So, let's go on an expedition tour in the Frost Islands and gather a good amount of Carbolite and 3 acute fangs from Baggis. Once back to Kamura, head to the smithy and craft the Keen Edge second, making sure that you are using the Silkbind Boost ramp up skill. Regarding the armor, we will start by gathering Jagra Scales Plus and Quality Stomach from Altaroth. In this way we can craft the Hunter Vambraces S and the Scalda Elytra S, the strong piece made from the Toxic Kumori, which you can find via the Argosy, as I mentioned in my previous video already. At this point we have a pretty solid defense and we are ready to deal with Agnesome. It will not be easy the first time since the difference in both HP and attack makes this HR monster pretty tough, so make sure to bring some traps and trunk bombs to complete the quest more easily. You will probably need to slay this monster a couple of times in order to gather all the materials you need for the armor. Once you have gathered the materials, craft the Agnesome Chest S. Now that you have a decent amount of defense and offensive skills, it's time to go through the 4 stars key quests. I suggest completing the Great Itsuchi quest, the Kuruyaku and the Arzurus one, and finally the Lagombi. If you have some difficulties, you can always improve your defense and get one extra level of critical eye by crafting the Aknosom Helm S and swapping the Bariath legs with the Kuruyaku ones. In this way, you shouldn't have many problems anymore. Once you have completed 5 key quests, you unlock the Urgent quest. This time you need to take down a Juratodus. The first encounter might last for a bit since he has a good amount of HP and bad hits on values. But there's no need to panic, you will eventually succeed. A good advantage you can exploit from the 5 stars quest onward is the presence of Raijan that can appear randomly sleeping in a specific spots of the map. Its power is overwhelming during the Wyvern ride because of his Thunder Beam. Learn how to ride this monster efficiently and you will gain a great advantage during your quest. After Duratodus you will finally be able to unlock the high rank locations for the Meowcenaris and get the exclusive high rank materials from them. I will leave a link in the description with the unique materials you can get via Meowcenaris in high rank. If you head to the canteen you will notice that now there are more Dango you can eat, and in particular you can eat for Dango Weakener. This Dango skill will assign the 3 lowest HP rolls to the monster, which means you can potentially cut up to 10% HP from the monster at the start of a quest. I recommend eating every time from now onward for Moxie, Booster and Weakner. You will also have more decorations available, but unfortunately they are still not too useful. Regarding our weapon, I suggest crafting the Julien Blade and the Chill Blade second from the Ice Tree. They have both Blue Sharpness, 180 attack and Silkbind boost. About the armor, I recommend the ingot legs, but only if you have already crafted the Agnesom Helm S. So this is basically the armor you will use to go through the 5 stars quest. Among these quests, make sure to complete the Pishatan one. You will need his materials to unlock the quick sheath decoration when you reach Hunter rank 6. Once you complete 5 key quests, you will unlock the next urgent quest, which will be Mizuzune. If you did fight this monster back in the demo, I'm pretty sure you will have an easy time now. 
However, even if you didn't fight him, this monster is particularly a good matchup for Longsword, so it won't be that hard anyway. After beating Mitsuzune, you will unlock the quest to unlock the last switch skill for Longsword, which is the Spirit Reckoning combo. I recommend using it and start practicing as soon as possible. This combo will substitute the traditional Spirit Round Slash combo, and you will need some time before fully getting used to it. However, the advantages are many, like for example the more damage output, the less sharpness consumption and the less committing dividing slash compared to the Spirit Blade 3 to have a faster way to follow up a Yai Spirit Slash. Fugen will give you the last upgrade for your Petalace, the Demon Petalace 3rd. You will also have access to other decorations, this time some of them are comfy to use, like the Grinder Jewel which grants a level of speed sharpening. Regarding the armor, I recommend crafting the Burial Chest and Arms. Once you kill all the monsters whose materials are needed to craft the Quick Sheath Jewel, you can also craft the Tsunogre Helm to reach Weakness Exploit at level 3. This is the Hunter Rank 6 armor and decorations I suggest you use. For the weapon, you can craft the Mitsutsune Longsword. After completing 3 key quests, you unlock Ibushi in a Rampage quest. Although this will be your first Elta Dragon encounter, don't worry too much. If it's possible, I recommend going through the Rampage quest with other hunters, but even if you are in solo, there shouldn't be any serious problems as long as you play your cards correctly, making use of Kamura Villagers, Dragonator, Counter Gong, and Splitting Wyvern Shot. Once you complete 5 key quests, you unlock the next urgent quest to get access to 7 stars quest. This time, your target is not other than Raknakadaki, a very first opponent. This will probably be the longest quest for you to complete. It's totally normal. At first glance, Rachna's attacks look kinda random, but if you invest enough time to understand this monster's behavior, you will eventually notice that there is a clear pattern he follows and you will learn how to exploit those openings at the end. Good luck! Beating Rachna will unlock the 7 stars quest. At the same time, you will also unlock a new type of melding, which is Moonbow. I highly recommend making use of this melding to look for quick shift talismans. You might not need them now, but later in the endgame they will certainly come in handy. That's why it's a good approach to start looking for them as soon as possible. In case you run out of points, remember you can always gather the relic records in each map regain massive points in a small amount of time. I will leave a link in the description to a video showing all the relic records for each locale. The first monster I suggest you hunt is Gosarag. By receiving two ice blocks plus, you will have the chance to immediately craft the Rhyme Blossom, one of the strongest longsword for Hunter rank 7. Later you can also farm some Narga and craft his longsword, but it will be a bit more time consuming to get. The second monster you might want to hunt after Gos is Rajang. His armor legs are pretty good, granting 2 levels of critical boost, improving overall your defense and attack. After completing 5 key quests, you will finally unlock the final boss. I mean, not exactly the final one, because there might be something else afterward, but well, you got it I guess. We are talking about Thunder Serpent Narwa, the female counterpart of Wind Serpent Ibushi. The fight should not be particularly hard with the gear I recommend you to use. Make sure not to miss the splitting Wyvern Shot and the Dragonator and you will eventually succeed. And that's it for the high rank until Narwa. Of course, there is still more to cover after defeating him, but I decided to stop here for the moment. At this point, you basically reached the endgame of version 1.0 of Monster Hunter Rise. Capcom then released two new free title updates continuing the story after Narwa, adding new monsters and event quests. I will probably cover the latest endgame of version 3.0 in the future if you guys are interested, so please let me know in the comments. And with that being said, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!